Loaded cars go into the building. Empty cars leave the building. Unboxing, installing, and operating the Menards National Power and Light Plant on this episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And today we are looking at the Menards National Power and Light Building. This is the second traditional type of power plant that Menards has introduced. Uh, the first one, the I believe it was American Power and Light or American Light and Power, something along those lines. Anyway, that came out, if memory serves, around late 2016, early 2017. And that building was quite popular. And so a second edition, the National Power and Light building that we see here, came out in early 2020. With the power plant in particular, you can turn it into you know, not just a visual feature with the lights and such, but an actual operational point of interest and turning it into what is essentially a large operating accessory. And we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Let's open this thing up and take a closer look. Okay, so the clamshell is held on with some staples. Um, I'm going to start and let's try to take these staples off of the top and pop the top off and get the building out that way. Let's see if that is successful for us. Well, that came off anyway. All right. Um, so I should be able to pull the building out and let's take a look, see at what we've got. Okay. So the building, this is fiberboard construction. As you see, as I was taking this out of the package, uh, it's fragile. Uh, I knocked one of the doors off. Um, uh, but again, being fiberboard, uh, I will be able to glue that back. In matter of fact, you can see here that they used hot glue to install the window there. Uh, and these are some stickers of so fiberboard and sticker construction. And uh, I should be able to take some, uh, some white glue and put that back without any problems. So otherwise looking at it. So again, this is fiberboard construction. It's fragile. So if you were expecting plastic, um, it's not. And, you know, so being kind of nitpicky, I do have a loose piece of siding here again a little bit of uh, you know some white glue ought to work with that. But let's look at the overall structure of the building. So this would be what we would call the front footprint. We have a couple of dock doors, office door, uh, and our big feature, this neon sign, which you'll see when we plug it in. Uh, over here, we've got, you know, so our electrical transformers, a couple of smokestacks. And we can now turn, let's turn the building this way. And now from this side view, you see this panel here, which can either be left in place and used as a truck dock door, or this panel can be removed and to be used as a pass-through uh, for trains, either partially to move cars into the structure, or there's another, another panel on the other side so that you can run trains through. So you can decrease the overall effective footprint of these buildings, uh, you know, on a smaller layout by running part of your main line through the building if it's up against a back wall, uh, or you can increase operation by, you know, running your siding through the building and having cars go through it. Okay, and not much going on here on the backside. Uh, again, you can see a few more of the details. Some, well, I don't know if you can actually see the roof details up here. Let's move that up. There we go. Uh, so you can see the ventilation shafts and such on the roof and our transformers. We have some signage over on the side. Let's turn this. And we see the other panel that can be removed. <laughs> Danger clearance, 24 feet. This is plenty tall enough. Um, for just about any O scale rolling stock to go through uh, and clear. So you, it would be okay for use with your main line. So I'm gonna turn this around and here's my door again. And I'm gonna make these couple of very quick repairs with some white glue. And then we are going to plug it in 
and take a look at the lighting effects. Give the overall first impression on construction. I am a little disappointed. It does seem kind of fragile, but uh, again, the overall impression of the building, especially the height. So the building really looks a lot bigger. Overall proportions, as far as the doors and the windows, are pretty much true O scale. Now, obviously, a lot of selective compression has gone into this because an actual 148th power plant you know, isn't going to fit in the basement, much less on the layout. So now to move on to the real attraction of the building, and that is the lighting. In order to light the building, there is a separately purchased power supply. The building draws approximately 700 to 800 milliamps. Uh, so a one amp power supply is sufficient. And Menards does have a single unit, uh, one amp, uh, four and a half volt supply retails for $7.99, or I chose the slightly upgraded, the number 279-4362, which is a two amp, four and a half volt supply, and it has three connectors. So in addition to your power plant, you can add you know, some of the other Menards lighted effects. Now there are other brands that you can use. I believe Woodland Scenics is comparable, uh, perhaps Lemax, check. Uh, very carefully that you get the right voltage, four and a half volts, uh, and the right size connector and such. Just to avoid confusion, I went ahead and got the Menards version rather than trying to cut corners and buying a cheaper one on Amazon or such only to have the connections not match or whatever. So uh, there are two ways to plug it in. Uh, there is an outlet here on the side, or there's also a plug underneath the building. For right now, I'm gonna plug it in on the side. All right, so here you can see the building lit up. You know, first we have our national power and light sign, um, and you can watch the animation here on the lightning bolts in just a moment. So it stays lit for quite a while, and then it decides, there we go, and the lightning bolts come from the top down, and then it lights up national power and light. We have our flashing strobes on top of our transformers here. We have security lights around the building. We have similar security lights on all sides. So all together, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 18, and how many in the back? 1920. Okay, so we have around the building 20 of these white security lights, plus our flashing strobes here on the transformer, and our animated national power and light sign. Let's take a look to the underside of the building. So here underneath, you can see our four and a half volt plug here. If, like me, you want to remove these doors in order to make a pass through, uh, it's relatively simple. Uh, just grab these two sides of your piece and it comes out as a single panel as such. So you'll want to keep that. And the nice thing about this, if we can put it back up on its side, is that there is detail on this interior portion. Here we have if we can see that. If you can see, here is another dock door, another office door. Uh, so it's not just an open building. There's actually detail there. There are things uh, and then windows on this side. The other thing this allows you to do is to just set the building on top of existing track. So if you have your siding already in place, you can simply drop the building in place add your wiring for your LEDs and you're ready to roll. And so here is the structure installed on the layout. So to do this, I have added uh, this 027 loop. I've added a turnout here and another one back here that you can't see right behind the corner here of the plant. And so I have this 027 curve 
going around between those two turnouts. So I could just put in a straight spur track that would hold three or four hoppers, but instead I intend to use this structure along with one on the other side to implement a, a neat operating illusion. If you think about most railroad cars, our box cars, our tank cars, covered hoppers, you really don't see a difference between the loaded car and the empty car. However, hopper cars are different. You can look and see when they are loaded, when they are empty. And that presents a possibility to incorporate loading and unloading into our operation. Some of Lionel's best operating accessories over the years didn't actually do what they made you think they were doing, but rather used a type of illusion. For example, the operating sawmill didn't actually cut logs into lumber planks, but logs went in, planks went out, and our brains filled in the rest and said, well, the building cut them into planks. Similarly, the operating water tower, you didn't actually see water coming out of the spout and into the locomotive, but you did see that the water level in the tower was dropping. And so your brain filled in the rest of the action and said, well, it must be going somewhere. It must be going into the locomotive. So here with our power plant, we are going to have, imagine a view block of some sort. It can be as simple as a backdrop. And not only will you not be able to see behind the power plant, but uh, the mountain will come here and these cars will immediately go into a tunnel and disappear so that you can't see them going around this curve. So the plan is to utilize a concept that has been used by scale modelers for years. I know this goes back at least to the late John Allen and his Gorian Defeated Railroad. It may have come from even earlier than that, uh, going back to the late 1950s. We will have trains deposit loaded hopper cars into our power plant. And so kind of in reverse clown car fashion, all of these loaded hopper cars will be pushed back into the plant, disappear into the mountain so that only one car can be seen. At some point, a switcher on the opposite side will pull the cars the rest of the way through and out of sight. On the opposite side of the mountain, there is a coal mine and the switcher for the coal mine has pulled the loaded cars now out of the mine, those same loaded cars that were pushed into the power plant now get pulled out of the coal mine and in their place, empty hopper cars are now shoved back through the mountain and will come out in our power plant. And now another train arrives to remove the empty cars now from the power plant as all of the coal has been burned up and repeat the cycle by parking loaded hoppers in the power plant. So as for a mine, I haven't built one yet. Uh, Lionel did make a halfway decent one in the 70s, but wouldn't it be nice if Menards, are you listening Menards, made a similarly sized coal mine to go with the power plant as uh, you know, a complement to the accessory. The key to making this illusion work, of course, is having your mount and having your view block so that you don't see these cars going in and out of the plant and around the curve, and similarly on the other side, in and out of the coal mine. The trick is to not see the cars until they come out here on the plant or out of the entrance of the mine. So that little trick adds quite a bit of operating interest to this structure. So now that not only is this a focal point of the layout, it's now an operating point of the layout. You can repeat this cycle of loads in, empties out, loads in, empties out, over and over and over as many times as you like in an operating session and keep viewers amazed of, well, what happened to those loaded hoppers and what happened to those empty hoppers? So in short, I highly recommend these for the layout. The advantages include that it's a very impressively tall building for the relatively small geographic foot footprint that it takes up. You have the option of running trains through the building, again, decreasing the footprint, but increasing the operation. You've got really cool lights um, and, and just good details and overall uh, a very pleasing building. The downside being that it is somewhat fragile, being made out of press board. Uh, we've got some stickers. I strongly caution the use of this building in a high humidity environment. 
For example, if you have a garage or attic railroad and you live in the Midwest or the South where it gets really hot and humid in the summer, I don't know how the press board and especially these stickers are going to react to those high humidity situations. Uh, so you want to have it in a climate controlled area as much as possible to increase the longevity of this cool building. But overall, a really nice building, a very versatile building, and uh, hopefully Menards will uh, make these available for quite some time. So I hope you've enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. If so, please like it, please share it, subscribe, leave a comment or two about uh, what your thoughts and what your experience with these Bernard structures is. Keep those trains running and we'll catch you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks.